What's going on, y'all? You know who it is. Mr. Warmack, a.k.a. Low Rent, a.k.a. The Ignorant American, a.k.a. The Truth As You Know It, a.k.a. Dirty Business, a.k.a. The Jet Jaguar of YouTube. Hey, how's it doing, folks? Glad you're listening, glad you're subscribing, glad you're liking, glad you're sharing. You know, finally the people are waking up. And uh, you know who I am, and I'm gonna, today I'm going to talk about what happened with Al Sharpton and the Chicago Massacre. Now, depending on how I do this, because I haven't decided yet, this is the, this, the pre-production, so I have to do everything in post, but I might put the video before or after I talk. I might put it before and give my thoughts, or I might put it, give my thoughts and let you go, and then play the video and then let you decide. I think I might do it that way. But uh, what happened was... Uh, Al Sharpton uh, had a town hall meeting. Probably, you know, you know the same people that were behind him. He had a town meeting in Chicago. Supposedly about the violence and the guns and, you know, Al Sharpton was going to come with all his usual rhetoric, you know, guns, this, that, fifth, you know. But uh, what happened was, as a lot of us are saying on YouTube, black people were finally starting to realize that a lot of these DNC liberal policies, lo the liberal policy makers, a lot of these fake preachers, and a lot of these other panhandlers for li uh, liberals, they're not doing anything for you. And a lot of these people, like the point they made is, that, like, and honestly, it's not the gun violence, it's the lack of jobs in that area. And if you look at it, what has, this is Barack Obama's hometown, quote unquote. And you wouldn't think that it would be in the shambles it is as far as the way they were talking, and which I agree with the people who said 100% totally. They were, they were, they were they're fed up. They're fed up with their politicians. They were fed up at the town hall because, you know, the, they didn't they, Sharpton wanted to lead it one way, and they were like, no, this is what we need to talk about because we live here. Sharpton just came around to pacify everybody. He wanted to say, you know how they give the usual rhetoric, all this, you know how they do on MSNBC and Fox News, too. They do the, they're, the, they're the polar opposites of each other, both those stations, which I watch, by the way. But uh, he, he came in with his rhetoric, guns, youth, you know the whole nine without Sharpton. But uh, like I said, the folks turned the tables. And this is what we keep saying, and like a, like a lot of people on YouTube and myself keep telling you this. Unless you until you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you can only change the things that you you want to do. I mean, I know there's gonna be some naysayers, you know that, you know they're gonna say, oh, blacks don't control this and this, that, and the fifth. But at the end of the day, let me tell you what a local politician told me, and it's kind of true. Well, they want to not kind of is true. You have the ability to affect your local area and your local politics, more so than you have to affect the state and the national. Now, you have to affect the state unless you live in cities like L.A., Chicago, New York, you know, Houston, Philadelphia, stuff like that. But other than that, you, you have more effect on your direct and local politicians, and that's what a lot of these people were expressing. They were expressing, get rid of all the aldermen that, like, voted for a lot of this stuff. They're like, get rid of the, the you know, Emmanuel. They're like, get rid of a lot of people. But at the same time, what I liked, what I loved hearing was they were wanting to make, they wanted to hold the community accountable too. They just weren't holding, you know, the, the politicians and these fake teachers accountable. They wanted to hold the people in the community accountable, say, we'll, we'll elect our own watchdogs who will look over at everybody, make sure everybody's doing the right thing. And I loved hearing that. And then all them fake black unity speeches here on YouTube, that was black unity because everybody was in accordance and in agreement. And then basically, if you listen to a lot of videos on YouTube by other fellow YouTubers who have who share the same mentality and, and like what I say, it, we're, we're, it's coming to bear. You have to be sick and tired of all of it. And I think what it is in Chicago, people are just normal, regular folks, and that's who I think was at the meeting. Most of them were just normal, regular people. They were just sick and tired. You know, you know, they come around, give us nice little speeches, you know, we shall overcome, Al, Al Sharpton does his little, you know, song and dance, and at the end of the day, Chicagoans are left with the Chicago mess, you know what I mean? They, Al Sharpton can fly into Chicago, because you know what, Al Sharpton, you know, he's flying back to D.C. or Manhattan. Al Sharpton, I don't think, lives back in Brooklyn. If he does live in Brooklyn, he lives in downtown, or Williamsburg, or some shit like that. Or maybe Bensonhurst. I'm sure he's not living in East New York or Brownsville or Crown Heights. He might have an office in Bed-Stuy. And that depends on what part of Bed-Stuy he's in. 
But I digress. What I loved about it was a lot of these people were holding not only politicians, but they were holding folks in the community accountable. They want to know why they have all these board up houses, why they don't have any jobs. They want to know why, and, they, and what got me was when they said, "If we don't, if we aren't getting our answers. We're tired of it. We're going to take it to the po take it to the polls." And that's what I'm talking about. And if you see the video, or if you saw it already, or once you see it, Al Sharpton looked like if you, I watch a lot of Family Guy. And, and please don't cry about how Family Guy is racist. Family Guy, if you watch the cartoon, they pick on everybody. And uh, what happened was, Al Sharpton, he looked, he looked like, if you, if you watch Family Guy, Al Sharpton looked like the guy, at the, you know, the, the stunt guys that take you to the commercial. He goes, Jimmy, Jimmy, play the piano. And they play a little piano tune before the commercial. That's what Al Sharpton looked like the whole meeting to me. I mean, he, he, he just, I mean, I, well, this is, they're just out of touch. And it takes people to stand up and say something about this. Let me, let me make a point. First of all, I do not have anything against anybody. But if you look at Al Sharpton, he's supposed to be a reverend, right? You're on NBC with Rachel Maddow. Now, you're in cahoots with the homosexual agenda. That alone goes against the religion you keep talking about if you're a so-called reverend. That's just my line of thinking. If you look in your book, now I know a lot of you going to come up with some, with some namby pamby, you know. Well, God said, who are you to judge? John 7, 24 gave me the right to judge people. Look in your own Bible. Quit letting heathens like myself and others teach you about your own Bible. I can judge you as long as I judge you righteously. And I'm judging righteously because I have no hate in my heart. Al Sharpton has betrayed the, he's betrayed you guys. I won't say he's betrayed you guys, sounds harsh. Al Sharpton has took a lot, let me, let me talk to you in your own language since you're a bunch of Bible thumpers. Al Sharpton has took manna over the word of man. Over the word of God, my fault. And when you take manna over the word of God, this is what you get. You get policies where now the homosexual agenda is being touted. You get you get you get these things where poor Phil off. I mean, I won't say poor Phil because he's making money. You get Phil off of Doug Commander. I won't say the show name because the, the the people who make the show make the money. The people the Phil from Duck Commander. Look, I heard what he said. You, I mean, he said he said a lot of truths. You know, I, I may or may not disagree with what he said, but at the end of the day, he has the right to his opinion like anybody else. The problem is, is a lot of you people are so touchy, you're just looking for anything to pounce on because you've been you've been hyped up by these race baiters. And that's the problem. Now, a lot of people are going to get mad at me and say, oh, well, did you hear what he said about blacks? That's the tactic that a lot of the homosexuals use to get a lot of you ignorant Negroes. To, I'm not going to call you guys stupid because a lot of you guys aren't stupid. You're just ignorant. What they do is, and that's get, that gets you all fired up, they know how to bait you guys. What they do is, well, Phil said this about homosexuals. If you look what he said about homosexuals. At the end he said, but who am I to judge? I don't hate anybody. That's God's, up to God to decide. But they didn't play that because that would have been like too much of a right thing. But when I, when I was on Facebook one time, I, I defended that, and then here's where they come. Well, did you hear what he said about blacks? What's that have to do about homosexuals? And, and, and then a lot of you black people are so, now I'm going to say stupid on this one, because you let them compare black to homosexual. And then everybody goes, well, there's parallels in the community. I didn't know that being black was a sin. And that's the main, well, stop me if I'm wrong, but unless this says in the Bible, being black is a sin, and God detests that, you know. I mean, no offense, homosexuality is the only offense in the Bible where it says that God has complete disdain for it. I'm just kicking facts, folks. Don't get mad at me. But back to Chicago. I've been digressing, but I'm, I'm, I was going for the tangent there. Back to Chicago. I love the fact that I saw the people say what they were saying. They were saying the right things that are sick and tired. Now, a lot of you snake charmers out there, be, on, be alert because we are watching you. And the minute you switch your message up to cater to what you're saying, we're going to nail you. So people of Chicago, I applaud you. I give you credit because you're, you're sick of it and you're, and you're doing something about it. Now that can transcend to other parts of the country. We'll be a much better country. All right, peace. We don't have a games, gun, and drug problem. We have a nepotism, cronyism, and patronage problem. It's time that we start voting differently. And every single alderman was a part of this criminal process. I would call it a serious town meeting. 
Amen. Black Amen. And town meetings that those Republicans have called, they call it the Tea Party. They need to start voting them out. That's what I challenge the community. Instead of Pharaoh letting us go, black folks let Pharaoh go. We've been trained to vote in a specific manner. Here to say to you that we need to start looking at the manner in which our elected officials have been voting. And say to you, start pulling their voting records. If they have not voted in the manner that is beneficial to you, yours, and your community, then you need to start voting them out. That's right. Our aldermen, specifically those aldermen that we voted into office to represent us, have not represented us. It is time that we start voting differently, and I say to you in March that we start voting for those that are going to represent us. Thank you. There's a lot of people in here who have different agendas and different attitudes, but we did all come together on a peaceful and on a one accord. This was a signal sent to City Hall, to the fifth floor, who sent no one down here to make sure that the city that he resides over, that he could step in and say that he's doing something. First of all, I'd like to say one major thing. Stop blaming just anybody for the violence in the city of Chicago. Blame the right, right people. Not just white people, blame the right people. Because it ain't just white folks a part of this. But it is on the fifth floor. It is on the fifth floor. The fifth floor took your school. The fifth floor just took all your jobs that he said that he gave to the ex-offender. It's the policies of the administration. And every single alderman was a part of this criminal process that messed over our people. And you was right, brother. You was right. They should let Pharaoh go. But some of these Negroes that say they are ministers need to let them go, too. They need to let them go. Our people are suffering and being devastated. On, we have boarded up houses in every community in our community. It's almost like the curse of Pharaoh. Every other house is boarded up in our neighborhood. Why can't we build it up? So my question is just here. Mr. President, because he watches your program. Mr. President, the man that you have sent down here as the mayor hate us. Ain't no other way of getting around it. We asked him the president of the United States. We asked him the president of the United States. Let us, the grassroots people, not these name brand blue ribbon Negroes, us, the grassroots people, let us take our bills. Stop giving them people, them evil, evil people our money. Don't give them our money. I would like for you, I'm gonna make a point, brother, that's what we peace. I'm not 80, I'm 82 years old and don't hurry me, please. Amen. Reverend Charlton, I would deal with each one of those communities. I would go to all your gods and I would deal with them. And I would call a, a meeting in, in each one of these communities. Amen. Rosalind, that area. In the area of Marvin Park, Maple, Maple Park, Lord Trumbull Lord. Park, and all the other. I would call a serious town meeting. Yeah. Man. Like Man. the town meetings that those Republicans have called, they call it the Tea Party. Yes, sir. We yes. don't want no, no people in it that don't want to commit. Amen. We're going to go to the government. Yeah. We're going to get rid of these do nothing yes, politicians Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, in the Lord. city council. Yes, yes. The, the, the representatives, yes, Lord. the senators, uh -huh. and all. Well, We're going to, like they shut the government down, uh -huh. we're going to shut these areas down. Amen. Right. Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, hallelujah. And, 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 and when we deal with these, we're going to appoint captains and lieutenants over yes, each one of these communities. Yes. And they're going to pick their soldiers. People that's gonna really do the job. That's right. So let's be clear about something. You said that the president sent the mayor down here and he don't like us. Who voted for him? Last time I checked, the statistics said that he carried every 
black board. And every time it comes time for us to do something, we do the same old thing. So I am simply saying, as clear as I can be, how dumb can you be?